Great. Um, so what's going on with uh, the uh, OpenStack Foundation now? I know you had a board meeting yesterday. Anything interesting? Yeah, we had our, uh, our first uh, full board meeting yesterday. Um, so basically, you know, the OpenStack Foundation is formed and, uh, and we're starting to, to get operational. This was something that, uh, that Rackspace announced in October of 2011, so 10 months ago. Um, that you know we're going to be forming a foundation in 2012, yeah. and it's been a it's been a very uh, a very lengthy and, and detailed process in some ways, but also um, you know if you think about the community that we have and the work that we're doing and uh, you know the software that we're building, we've been able to basically create this new entity, get it funded, get a lot of support from different companies, um, hold elections for gold directors, for individual directors, file paperwork. Have a legal entity, all of this stuff, you know, and and uh, and you know, yesterday was the first full board meeting, and kind of we're we're arriving at the point where we're about to launch the foundation, and it's going to take OpenStack off into the future. Now, is that uh, official launch? I'm assuming at the OpenStack uh, meeting coming up in September. Or? No, the the uh, we're we're going to officially launch in uh, in mid September, and uh, the OpenStack summit is in October. So just about a month before now, that. spending all this time, you know, creating a foundation, and then you still have that Folsom release coming out. Yes. Uh, you're only 24 hours in a day, <laughs> so how can you do both things and still be sane? Well, the well, on the release side, you know, we've got a, a great team of, uh, of leaders in the community. Yeah. The development teams are um, are organized in in a really efficient way, and they have you know leaders for each project. Um, one of the things that's been, I think, one of the one of the best improvements in OpenStack in the last year is the, the the real involvement of some very mature software organizations like Red Hat and SUSE and IBM and some of these other companies that have that have come in and and one of their contributions is they've they've formed stable release teams they've helped with uh, with different um, continuous integration testing so you know I mean that thankfully we've got a, a great team in the community uh, who, who's been able to to keep improving things. Um, and you know, on, on, on our side, we uh, we've done a lot of uh, organization around events and uh, trying to to keep the community moving forward. The key thing that we said at the beginning is, you know, we're going to go to the foundation as quickly as we can, but we're not going to put any of uh, of OpenStack at risk. Yeah. And I think that that you know we've been able to balance that pretty well. Right. Um, and then one of the big things that I know I'm looking forward to in Folsom is now, I guess, Quantum is going to be a full project. Yes. Uh, which is relatively, I guess that's the first big project, well, Glance, I guess, moved from uh, initially across about a year as well, so it's about the same kind of track. Yeah. Um, yes. So, yeah, I mean, last last release uh, in Essex, we had uh, the dashboard that yeah. became a core project, and um, we had the, the identity service that became a core project. Uh, this time around, we've got uh, the quantum networking project, which is yeah. really exciting, and you know that's going to be in there. But there's a migration path too, so you can continue to run with um, the you know the the, the existing networking yeah. options. Um, you know, quantum is going to be the preferred choice for sure. But we yeah. uh, one of the things as we as we started to really ramp up and, and get uh, users that are that are deploying it, especially Essex, yeah. uh, we, we're trying to be much more conscientious about. Um, upgrade paths and, and giving people a smooth way to, to move through updates in the in the software. The other piece that's uh, that's that's going to be um, in in Folsom is the, uh, the the block storage volume project called Sender. And okay. so this is uh, this is another thing similar to Quantum, which was part of the Nova Compute project originally. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there's a there, there's been a lot of teams from NetApp and and Solid Fire and, uh, and other companies who have been getting involved in, in the block storage capabilities yeah. of, of OpenStack. And, uh, and you know, it's something that, uh, that it made sense to kind of split it out and yeah. give it a focus team as well. And so that's, um, you know, that's gonna be uh, in, in Folsom as well. So Cinder is a separate project altogether? Yep. Now, I'm not as familiar as I should be, but I know the SUSE guys launched something the other day, their own cloud, and they've got uh, what do they call it, RBD uh, block file support or something like that? Is that in any way related to Cinder? Is that something entirely different from your perspective? Yeah, so so the way that the block storage works in, in OpenStack is there's an API for creating volumes that you can then mount into virtual machines. Yeah. And behind that, there are a lot of different options that you can use to actually 
you know, write the zeros and ones to disk. Yeah. And and so um, that's what what a lot of these companies have uh, have done is they've they've integrated the um, the OpenStack block storage API onto other storage systems that that you know they already support. And and you know another company that's done that is uh, is DreamHost and Ceph. Yeah. Uh, so you can use the Ceph distributed storage system sure. within OpenStack. Uh, you can do the same thing with NetApp. Um, they've you know they've done work around that as well. And it's I think it's one of the one of the strong points for um, the, the architecture that OpenStack has. Uh, and and also you know just the way that the community develops things is all of these companies are able to come in, basically write some drivers, do some yeah. integration work, and then their existing users. Um, you know, people who are getting into OpenStack who got an investment in, in a storage system that they know how to how to install, upgrade, monitor, yeah. operate. You know, they can, they don't have to lose that investment. They can continue to, to work with that, but they get all of the automation and control from the OpenStack system. Sure. They get integration into their compute environments, and you know, it all is kind of through one one cloud system. Now, I know you just mentioned you know about the migration path, and I know there was some uh, challenges for people moving Diablo to ASICs and the like. Um, I think since that time frame, also the Dell people have been very active with uh, Crowbar and the like. Is Crowbar, from your perspective, still you know separate outside of OpenStack, or is that something that could be part of the default Folsom install from OpenStack itself? No, it's a it's it's a related project. It's not part of the uh, the default install with OpenStack. Um, there are definitely quite a few people who use it yeah. as a way to to um, you know get the OpenStack software onto their systems and to to manage it. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of people use Crowbar and Chef together. Yeah. Um, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not part of the the core OpenStack. The core of OpenStack is really focused on on infrastructure as a service. Yeah. And um, you know, uh, the if you look at kind of the, some of the changes from Diablo to Essex to Folsom, it's about really making a a well integrated set of infrastructure services that are that are all tied together with um, you know with the identity service the the uh, there's a, a discovery service within Keystone so that yeah. you can kind of ask your cloud, what are you running? What can I do <laughs> and, you know, yeah. on you? And uh, um, you know, a dashboard that gives people an interface to interact with all of it. And that's really the, you know, the focus of, of the, the main release of the core of OpenStack is those services. There are a lot of other things that are around it, around metering and billing and monitoring sure, sure. and things like Crowbar or um, you know, the, the uh, private cloud installer from Rackspace or you know, the Airframe um, installer that Piston has recently yeah, yeah. announced, you know, that sit around it and, and take that core and kind of uh, add something to it that, that, that these companies think their users like. But the core is really robust, scalable infrastructure services. From a, a beyond Folsom perspective, and I know that's you know, hard to think because that's the, the big focus and that's beyond the foundation. So assume those things are done uh, yep. and congratulations on getting them done. That was fast. <laughs> uh, Looking, is there more? Yeah, is is, is there more? Like, yes. what, what's the continuous path? Because you know this project has moved to maturity relatively rapidly. Mm -hmm. You have uh, networking. You got block storage. You got object storage. Yeah. Uh, what what's the the future direction in a big picture perspective? Where does it need right. to go? Yeah. Well, I think I think that uh, that um, you know one of the things that that will happen that will be a good thing is that some of the uh, the rate of change will will slow down. Yeah. <laughs> this will be a good thing for users and for for. Um, Companies. I mean, we've we've just we've gotten a lot of the, the the big stuff in place, and at this point, we can start to make we can start to make improvements instead of um, you know large changes and yeah. large additions. And I think that that's that's you know a, a really good thing to to get to. Um, but I think that that also uh, what's what's really exciting is to see some of the the other ways that people are taking those core services and expanding them to different architectures like ARM. Or yeah. power, or um, you know, different types of form factors, going to bare metal instead of just on top of the hypervisor. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the other companies that are getting involved that that want to integrate with different virtualization technologies. I think you know what what we'll see is we've got this this solid core of software that's going to it's going to keep expanding out more and more um, in the ways that you can use it, and and I think that um, that, that within the community. One of the things that uh, that you see is, uh, I think, a lot more um, a lot more awareness of users and user needs. And from a from my perspective, and from I think you know what what the uh, the, the foundation can do to, to help OpenStack, 
continuing to work on that, uh, on, on involving users and making sure that we're really listening to users is, is one of the critical things. And so, you know, I mean, I think we're not, we're, we're, um, we're hopefully we're going to, to have things that are, that are really important to users, yeah. but, you know, that's not going to mean that there's a, a new project every release at this point, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing. That, and there are a lot yeah. of projects around OpenStack. There's a, similar to Crowbar. Um, there's a project called Sealometer, which is uh, around billing. There's a, a project called Heat, which is uh, um, it's it's a way to, to kind of describe an application as a package of resources that could be you know X number of virtual machines, this many block devices. What's that this project called? Heat. Heat. Yeah. That sounds almost like uh, an Ubuntu Juju Charm kind of concept. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's similar to like Cloud Forms. Or something okay. Like that. Um, you know, there are past services like Cloud Foundry yeah. and, uh, and you know, others that are, that are building on top of OpenStack. And I think that, you know, you'll also see a lot of, a lot of innovation and integration, you know, kind of bolting onto, onto the core of OpenStack as a yeah. really solid foundation for, for other capabilities. Good. Um, and speaking of the foundation, when I get emails from you now, uh, now that I'm a member. <laughs> yes. Uh, Thank you. You're an assistant secretary or acting secretary, <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, there's a, this has been a transition period. We have to file in Delaware before we can have members, before we can hold sure, an election, sure. and all this kind of thing. And, uh, and you know, up to, uh, to, to, in order to do that, we had an interim board that was basically responsible for filing papers and holding an election. Yeah. And um, so, yes, that was a... So an when all is said and done, secretary and an interim VM or interim I, I VP, not VM. I, you know, I see your name on, on a gazillion lists, but uh, when all is said and done, what position are you going to hold? So um, I will uh, be the executive director in the foundation. Yeah. Initially, that's so um, kind of running it, building a team, and helping yeah. to get it off the ground.